In this video, we are going to discuss how to spot a romance scammer from a mile away so that you don't get burned. Hi and welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Ernie Silovic and I'm a relationship trainer and therapist where I teach couples how to be masters in the art and science of love, romance, communication, fun, excitement, passion and emotional fulfillment. There are many ways these days to meet someone online. There are dating sites and apps, social media, email and the list goes on. Whichever method is used, I will be providing you with 22 major tips to use as a lookout for potential romance scammers. Many of these tips work both for online and in-person contact. Tip number one, if they do not answer your questions. Many years ago, I used to get emails from women from certain countries who pretended to get my email address from a dating site and would send something like an introductory email. Sometimes, for fun, I would reply, knowing full well that they were scammers because dating sites don't work that way. In my letter, I would ask them some questions. For example, what kind of work they do or their date of birth. Upon their reply, I would find they sent me a very long email giving me a whole bunch of information and yet not answer my specific questions. This is a sign of a lack of respect for the time you spent, your interest in them, and who you are as a person. Even if they translated the email to their language, the questions would translate accordingly, so there is no reason not to answer those couple of questions. If they don't answer basic questions now, imagine in five years time. In my programs, I talk about how respect needs to come before love. Love needs to be built on top of respect for someone. This leads us to tip number two. There is a series of emails they send with additional information about themselves that you did not request. If someone sends you their whole life story which you didn't ask for, it is a warning sign because they are giving away too much information way too early. In the real world, this would usually take a few dates as people get to know one another. So, one must question their true intention. Tip number three, if they refuse to go online and show their face, there are no excuses these days. They often use their work for the army, intelligence, or whatever, yet they can use it for personal reasons. Even James Bond shows his face. If they are away working for the defense forces, you must ask, if we get together, how much time will they be away then? The answer is probably a lot. So do you want someone in your life with whom you hardly spend time with? And the lack of a face is a key indicator of a scammer as often it is a man pretending to be a woman. I sometimes get messages on WhatsApp from someone I don't know saying, Hey Mike, it's Joanne. I had been looking for you for so long. I immediately recognize they are a scammer and play along. I know because my name isn't Michael and I don't know any Joannes. Just recently, I had someone do this to me on WhatsApp. She stated she leaves in Adelaide and her grandmother leaves in Sydney. Keeping the story short and after telling her I'm a happily married man, she persisted, which is the format they follow. So I said to her, oh, so your grandmother leaves in Sydney? Great. Is she about to die because I need some money so I can move to Europe to be with my wife? Strangely enough, I never heard from her again because I was the one asking them for money first as opposed to the other way around. Once they noticed I was after their money, they stopped communicating with me. Funny that. Tip number four, if they tell you they love you too early. I've seen several romance scam videos in which one person tells the other on the first date that they love them. Although I do believe in love at first sight, real, true love takes time. Sometimes an instant connection can be made, yes. Where two couples talk all night, yes. Where the chemistry is just right or even hot, yes. Yet real love does take time to grow. Many years ago, like two decades ago, I messaged a woman on a dating site who was apparently half North American and half South American. She replied, about a week later, she said she was going to an African country, which I won't mention, on an international modeling roadshow and would write to me once she arrived there. So, she did. And guess what her message said? I have arrived and I found a beautiful wedding dress for our wedding. It costs $800. Can you send me the money? I knew as soon as she mentioned this African country that she was a scammer, so I played along and said, sure thing, I will send it via Western Union. 
Now this is where basic logic comes in, folks, as her immediate response was, oh, they do not have Western Union here, only MoneyGram. So, after only 24 hours in a new country, she realises they don't have Western Union, yet to have MoneyGram. I thought, how convenient. In the meantime, I gave her some fake codes, and each time she came back saying the number I gave her was incorrect. Two can play at that game. And no, naturally, I did not marry this woman. Tip number five if they share everything with you too early. This is very closely tied to tip number two. If they tell you everything there is to know about themselves in a short period of time, you must wonder what their intent is and why they are in such a hurry. And is this used to disguise something they are hiding, like the fact that they are scammers? Next is tip number six. If they tell you about medical conditions early on, you can bet they'll be asking for money. Remember my previous tip about the woman on WhatsApp who mentioned that her grandmother leaves in Sydney? I can bet my bottom dollar that it was a prelude to trying to extort money from me to help her with medical issues and I also guarantee that any excuse under the sun would have been given not to be able to go see her, like maybe because she doesn't exist. I so often receive emails from scammers saying they had this issue or that issue and I am being left a huge amount of money in their will because they are about to die. Strange how they stop emailing me when I say I work as a therapist and can heal that issue for a certain amount of money. As soon as the table is turned on them giving you money, they stop communicating. This takes us to tip number 7. Do a reverse photo search and see if their photo shows up as someone else's. This can be done for free online. How often have I received or seen on dating sites the profiles of people with dozens of photos that look quite professional? To me, this is a sign of insecurity as well as a scam. Someone who is secure within themselves will not need to advertise themselves with a truckload of photos. So, take precaution, and if you find someone you like, just do a quick reverse photo search and see what or who shows up. Tip number 8. Examine their English. If English is your primary language, notice the other person's English. Scammers have bad spelling and grammar. This may be due to a lack of learning English properly. And do you really want to be in a relationship with someone you find difficult to talk to? I don't mean loving to hear yourself talk, yet rather proper two-way communication. Tip number 9. Look for someone who has control over their lives, financially, mentally and emotionally. You do not want someone who just got divorced or recently broke up. They need to heal and you don't want to be their rebound. It is said it takes up to 5 years to get over a divorce, which is longer than getting over a death in a family. Tip number 10. Look for consistency between their words and actions. They need to match as much as possible. Tip number 11. Look for excuses they may give, be it for not keeping an arrangement you made or for how their life is. You don't want a victim. You want to know they take responsibility for their life. Tip number 12. Like number 11 above, look for victim mentality or a poor me attitude. If someone always whines and complains, stay away. There are some people who are known as energy vampires, meaning that as soon as you are near them, they suck the life out of you, which leads to you feeling tired. You want someone who gives you energy rather than someone who depletes it. Negative people often have people feel like crap after being around them, so do your best to hang around happy, positive people. Tip number 13. Inquire whether they are employed, with whom, for how long, and for how much. What are their debts? How much disposable income do they have? Ask this over time, and then double check over time. You don't want someone who makes $100,000 a year and spends $50,000 of it a year gambling, buying drugs, or spending it on alcohol. Tip number 14. Inquire about previous relationships and what role they played in the breakup. If they say none, ask again. It takes two to tango, as the saying goes. Tip number 15. Beware if they ask you too many personal questions too quickly. Scammers look for weak points to exploit. If you are kind, they may play on that, or if you are generous, they can abuse that. Tip number 16. If they work for the Defense Force, Emergency Services, Oil Rigs, or are international business people, etc. Run. These people have such high affair rates or high suicide rates and PTSD issues from trauma. It is incredible, and then you are supposed to live with them for the rest of your lives. Wait till they get therapy or are back full-time on the mainland and settled, and not somewhere overseas. Tip number 17. If they are not online when they say they are going to 
to be from above, consistency and whether words equal behavior. Tip number 18. How do they deal with anger? There are some people who are so lovely to be around until they drink alcohol and become monsters, and sometimes just getting angry turns them into the most brutal of people. So check to see what they are like when annoyed, frustrated and really angry. Anger can lead to violence, so take note of this important tip. In one documentary on abusive relationships on YouTube, the girlfriend of a couple in England used to cut and physically abuse her boyfriend to the point of him needing to go to the hospital. Tip number 19. Do they have a caring, loving side or are they more about themselves? Do they show real interest in you or are they more self-absorbed? Do they buy you a gift, mostly so you can compliment them and use it as an IOU? Tip number 20. Do they have basic manners? Excuse me, sorry, thank you, please. Sociopaths, etc. Do not say these things. Narcissists and the like do not feel remorse or guilt, so lack basic empathy a normal human being does. According to recent online psychological statistics, 6% of the population is narcissistic. Tip number 21. How do they handle alcohol if they drink and how much and how often do they drink alcohol? This was partly covered previously as an overview. Do they fall asleep, talk more, throw up, or become abusive? Do certain alcoholic beverages affect them differently? Ask, find out, and take notice. Tip number 22. If they never tell you, they love you and don't prove it. Love not only needs to be verbalized yet also physically proven with gifts, no matter how small. Some men have a problem saying, I love you. To you guys, I say, get over it. You must value your love for your partner more than your discomfort with expressing it. So, there we have it. These are 22 tips for potentially identifying a romance scammer, whether in person or online. These have come from my own personal experience, by using some logic, and by having a very analytical mind. I trust these have helped and will continue to help you in avoiding being scammed and in your endeavors to find the love you want and deserve. I trust you have enjoyed this video and to ensure you keep getting more great quality information, click on one of the other videos at the end here or if you really want your relationship to move forwards in the most effective way, start going through your program, Awaken His Passion, A Course for Women or Awaken Her Passion, A Course for Men. I go into more detail with this information there. You receive a full 30 day money back guarantee and get to listen to two thirds of the course with online support in our undergraduate Facebook group to find out if it is a good fit for you, so click on the link in the description box. I trust to see you in our undergraduate Facebook group.